think before you do. Don't act so quickly on things. Because that's what the Yetzirah wants us to do. He wants us to act quickly because theoretically everything should be good. On the surface of things, everything looks good. Relationships look good. Sins look good. Everything looks good. You have to think about things. If a person thinks about things, he'll see that most of the decisions that he would make ordinarily, he wouldn't make. Anytime somebody asks you to make an agreement for any type of financial commitment, automatically, okay, I'll get back to you. When? I'll try to do it by tomorrow. No, no, but I need a decision now. You may need a decision now. I'm going to get back to you tomorrow. Why? I want to sleep on it. You don't really need to sleep on it. You actually know what you want. But sleep on it anyway. Why? Because maybe if you wait long enough, some thought that you don't have now, you'll have tomorrow. But the salesman is going to try to get you to do what? What the Yetzirah tries to get you to do. Commit right now. Trust me, I know I was a salesman for over 20 years. The best salesman in the world is the one that can make you make a decision right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, next, next year. Closing. Closing. There's, an, there's a term in, in, in sales. Always be closing. Meaning, i got to get you to buy now. Tomorrow, God only knows. You're already going to think about it and maybe say no. I can't get you to think. I need you to commit. But that's what the Yitzhak wants you to do. He wants you to commit to the sin. He wants you to commit to now. So what you have to do is get yourself used to, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Even if you don't feel like you need to get back to them tomorrow. Unless it's a mitzvah. If it's a mitzvah, you know for sure it's a mitzvah. It's a different story. But for things of this world, mundane things, I'll get back to you tomorrow. I'll get back to you next week. No, but we need an answer today. You may need an answer today. I can't give you an answer today. Suddenly, you'll see that they can deal with tomorrow also. Oh, no, no, I need the money tomorrow. Okay, so I'll talk to you tomorrow. No, no, but if you talk to me tomorrow, the money's not going to get there the next day. Okay, so we'll get there. So I'm going to send it to you then. No, 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 just get back to you tomorrow. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. All of a sudden, it's fine. All of a sudden, it's fine. This Rabotai is very important because many times we make bad decisions because we make them too quickly. There was a guy that... In the old days, it was okay to leave your wife for an extended period of time. Today, it's not so okay. Today, if you go to the store for five minutes too long, are you coming home or are you leaving? No, no, I'm coming. I'm on the way. I'm just on the highway. I'm just on the highway. You've been gone for so long. I just left ten minutes ago. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll be home. I miss you too. Rabbi, I can't come to the shoe. Why not? My wife, my wife. What do you mean, your wife? It's the shoe is ten o'clock at night. She's not sleeping. Yes, yeah, she's sleeping, but she wants me to be home. Why? So you can watch her sleep? I don't know, Rabbi, but she says she needs me to be home when she's sleeping. I said, tough wife. Thank God for YouTube. Sometimes the wife is tough. Sometimes the husband's tough. You have to use your imagination. You have to use your imagination of how to deal with them. But you also have to use your intellect too. Why? Your imagination may solve your problem today, but not tomorrow. Your intellect is what's going to help you tomorrow. There was one time a guy that grew up, his father had a successful business, and as his father got older, he said, listen son, I don't know how long I have in this world, but I tell you one thing, never make a decision right away. Anytime, especially if you're angry, don't make a decision right away. Wait until the next day. I said, okay. Shortly later, the, the father passed away, and the kid took over the business. As it took over the business, he found a woman to marry him, and he ran the business, made a few bad deals, because he was still young, and lost all of his money. He said, listen, I got to go travel a little bit, try to make some money, make some money, and I'll come back whenever we have money. You know, from time to time, I'll send you money. Stay loyal to me. She said, okay. In those days, it was okay. So he went on a journey, and every so often he would send money without really knowing what's going on. 20 years passed. 20 years passed, he acquired wealth again, and he decided to come back home. Came back home, came back to town, and he came back to the house, and he saw his wife, although 20 years older, still good-looking, and 
looks happy, but then suddenly some guy walks up to her and gives her a big hug and she starts kissing him and hugging and kissing her. She was like, oh, who's this guy? That's it. Takes out his sword. He's like, I'm going to kill both of them. <laughs> she didn't stay loyal to me. But then he saw it after he took out the sword. My father only taught me one thing. When you're angry, don't make a decision. Wait till tomorrow. So, he decided not to go there, not to kill both of them. He went to a motel, and he took a rest for the night. The next day, he decided to go to the shul to go ask around about his wife. He says, you know, such and such woman? He goes, yeah. You know anything about it? He goes, oh, she's a big tzadika. Big tzadika, she helps the community. Yeah, well, she's married? Well, yeah, the poor woman, her husband left her 20 years ago. Wait, so she's, she remarried? No, chas shalom. she stays loyal to him, she's great, she's that. She even has a son. She goes, what do you mean son? She went with some other guy? No, chas shalom. she's a tzaddika, who are you? You'd say bad things about this woman? No, no, I'm just wondering. No, she's a big tzaddika, what her husband didn't know when he left is she was pregnant, she didn't even know. She was pregnant, and then a few months after he was already gone, she had a baby, it's his baby. And now the kid's nice, beautiful kid, 20 years old. He goes, who's this kid? Show me. They start showing him, oh, that's him. Who's that? The same beautiful kid that was hugging the woman the day before is the son. He says, look at that. If I didn't listen to my father from over 20 years ago when he told me, son, don't make decisions right away. Wait a day. If I had just ignored this one piece of advice, not only would it have been a mistake that would have ended my marriage, it would have ended the life of my wife and my son. And that's why the Gemara says, anytime somebody's angry, for sure, you're not making the right decision. For sure it's a mistake. Now why is it a mistake? Because the Yitzhak has in control of it. Why? Because the anger is the highlight of imagination. Highlight of imagination. It's the highest point of imagination. When you're angry, what are you thinking about? It's all about me. They're doing it to discredit me. They're doing it to embarrass me. They're doing it to bring me shame. They're trying to destroy me. They're trying to this me. Me, 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 me. Everybody's against me. I'm alone. No one loves me. Everyone hates me. It's me against the world. And that's it. Oh, she's disrespecting me. He's disrespecting me. Dude, he's just going on a traffic. He didn't see you. He's not disrespecting anybody. He doesn't even know you exist. He didn't see you. He didn't see you. He just crossed because he didn't see you. No, no, he's disrespecting me because I'm this. No, no, he doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know you exist in the world. He's just some guy that lives in the same state as you for the last month. He doesn't know that you're there because he just he's in a hurry because his wife is pregnant and he's got his own problems and you just happen to be in the way. But no. When you're angry, you start having all of these delusions that come from your imagination that fuel your anger. And the more you express it, the more angry you become. The second you punch something, you hit something, you start cursing, you start yelling, it doesn't make your anger go down. It's fuel to the fire. People think, yeah, listen, if you're an angry person, get a punching bag. That's the worst possible thing you can do. If you get yourself used to being physical every time you're angry, guess what? Eventually it's not going to be a punching bag. It's going to be a person. If every time you're angry you want to hit a, a bag, guess what? One day it's not going to be a bag. It's going to be a person. Maybe your wife, your kid, your boss, your customer, somebody. But that's what secular knowledge will tell you. Why? Because they want you to think, look, look, there are professional people that hit the bag also. They do it for exercise. So you should too. You should too. That's not Judaism. Anger is one of the ways that the Yetzirah makes your imagination go crazy. The way to calm everything down is simply to become a lot more patient, even if that means you have to force yourself to become patient and to allow yourself to think before you act. Never be sporadic, never be spontaneous, never do things that way. Because the minute you start doing that, you become simply a slave of the Satan. And you start thinking based on your imagination, your whole life becomes based on your imagination. You start thinking you're either over-righteous or over-wicked. Either you're too bad to do tshuva or you're too good that you don't need tshuva anymore. 
You're too good that no one's good enough to marry you, or that uh, you're too bad that no one wants to marry you. You're a victim, or you're, uh, you know, you're, you're too strong. All, everything becomes an extreme. That's what the Chazoni says. We have to think. Use our mind, and only utilize the imagination if the intellect is still in control.